Yum yum. Hi, it's Alex. I've been asked to uh, show a bit what the pipeline kit does. So I've imported a step file via the uh, power translators. And as you can see, it consists of uh, instances of the chain, as well as normal meshes. And if you look at the centers of the chain, they're all over the place, making it hard to animate. Or let's say you want to simulate the chain movement or something. Ideally, you want the center at the center of the object. But if we just uh, select the source of the instance, and run a center debounding box center. The pieces, I mean, the, the center gets centered, but all the instances now have the wrong translation applied to them. <clears throat> so what we can do instead is run a instance source center adjust. And we have all the center options here, but we'll just center to B box at the moment and that should pop the center in here and adjust all the instances so all the instances stay in the place and can now be properly animated. Another quite useful thing is the B-Box toggle which will toggle the bounding box of any instances in the scene or alternatively of anything in the selection. So right now nothing is selected and that uh, will pop any instance in the scene into a bounding box display making the display much 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 faster. And I can just uh, as quickly go back to a normal drawing if I want to check something. Um, so or alternatively if I just have like these selected and run it that will just plop these into bounding box and back again. Let's switch them off again. Um, another thing is the D instance. I mean, of course, you can just select one item, find it in the item list, and go change type mesh to D instance it. Um, but what if you have like the whole hierarchy selected, or you do like a double click? Now, if you go change type to mesh, it'll also change the folders to mesh and uh, basically the whole hierarchy gets messed up. What the script does is no matter what you have selected, if you go the instance, it'll just the instance, the actual instances and leave the rest of the hierarchy alone. So now I have lots of individual meshes and the item list and like the folders and stuff like that are still intact. Uh, let's undo that. Um, we have reroute instances, a personal favorite of mine. Let's, uh, let's employ the trusty teapot, my, my go-to mesh. Let's make it a little bit smaller so it's actually uh, something like that. Now we select maybe the lower half of the instances. Uh, let's not use the source mesh. And now we can go reroute instances and select our teapot. And boom, all the instances have been switched out while keeping the position of the instances. Not sure why this one doesn't hasn't gotten the probably some kind of counting. Yeah. See, is that? Oh, that's actually not an instance, so that's why. That's the one we de-instanced before. That's the reason. You can easily switch out the, the, the mesh instances uh, on a as needed basis. We have a few animation features. We have a nicer uh, record GL uh, command, which allows you to actually capture uh, GL capture at the render resolution or a multiplier thereof uh, based on whatever render resolution is set in the render item. <clears throat> you can capture to image sequence and a movie. Just 
As per the normal DL capture command, you can uh, select the camera to capture with. By default, it's the render camera. You can have a shading style that's different from what's in the viewport. The advanced shading style has been set up with all the bells and whistles enabled, so you'll get shadows and uh, anti-aliasing and, and all that fancy stuff that advanced provides. Uh, so that's switched on automatically if you go advanced. Um, you can select the gel background. You have an option to capture with RayGL enabled. You can hide or show uh, replicators and uh, also locators in, in the GL preview. And also you can automatically, if you have like stuff turned to bounding box for preview purposes, make the geometry visible during the DL capture and it'll automatically get turned back to bounding boxes uh, when the DL capture is finished. You can enable or disable the shadows and the ambient occlusion. You have an automatic uh, naming um, that's based on a project definition, which I'll go into uh, in a second. Uh, you can have the automatic naming, or you can, if you untick that box, fill in your path and name as you like, and it'll use that. If you have already a file with that name, you can override it, or if you tick, untick that box, it'll automatically create a versioning for your GL captures. And you can, of course, uh, just use the scene range or you can uh, import first and last frame by, by hand. Then we have a bake camera hierarchy. So if you have any complex camera animation, like for example, I have a uh, camera rig that I often use, which has the camera on a bunch of controls. And that's just uh, some locator hierarchy, uh, but uh, if I want to use that camera, say in Nuke or something, just exporting that camera doesn't do anything because does, that doesn't have animation and exporting the animated hierarchy is a little bit shaky at best, so I have a big camera hierarchy and export as FBX by just clicking the camera or selecting the camera and then just specifying which range to bake. And that'll bake the camera animation and any any extra, like the focal length or anything else that's animated on the camera item itself. Um, the other items in here I'll go in to in a separate video because that's a little bit more involved. Basically, uh, the whole animation transfer workflow allows me to uh, save out and reload any complex animation of a complete hierarchy. Uh, by prepping a hierarchy with tags and then saving out the animation and loading back in the animation. But I'll go into that in a more detailed separate video. We also have some shading uh, tools. Fix Orphans, um, that fixes a bug in Modo where you can create any kind of uh, texture shader, whatever, in the shader tree, and you can accidentally unparent that. And now it's hidden from the UI and you can't, can't see that anymore. Um, and Fix Orphans basically resurrects them and puts them back in the shader tree. I've had scenes where of like 20 or 30 environment materials uh, flying around hidden uh, mocking up my scenes, so uh, I've adapted this uh, fix orphan script based on something uh, another user posted. Collect all texture locators is um, so it, it basically the idea is if you have a bunch of uh, textures with texture locators, and these are by default filtered out. Modo creates a texture group where it puts all the texture locators in. But if you now import another scene, you now get a folder 
Uh, okay, there's no texture locators in there, but in theory you would get a folder with additional texture locators in here. So let's just simulate that by moving the box in here. And now you have texture locators all over the scene, not just in the texture group. Uh, create, collect all texture locators, basically creates a texture locators group and puts all the texture locators in there at the top of the hierarchy. Um, create per, per material render outputs, you select any kind of render output that'll create a metal group and just select the group. And now you have an alpha and a color output called the same as the group. Blend hierarchy, blend arbitrary, that's still uh, in development. It's just basically a, a workflow that's supposed to help with having individual items or whole hierarchy of items fade in or out, as is often the case with the kinds of animations we do, uh, where the normal dissolve just doesn't do the trick because that's an, a per, per item thing. I'll post another video going into detail on, on what these do exactly. Next we have the rendering. Um, also has the record gel. Split blends into passes is related to the blend hierarchy and blend arbitrary uh, commands. That's also still uh, in development and not completely done. Create pre-material render outputs, we just saw that. Adjust overscan, it allows you to uh, add the bleed on the current render resolution. Uh, so you can either go by resolution or by scale and put multipliers in there and it'll, let's see. And now if we want to adjust the overscan, we can go either to a fixed resolution and it'll adjust the resolution as well as the Come on, as the camera film back settings. So if we go back to 1920 by 1080, you can see that shrink down again. Um, or you can just add a multiplier, like 5% larger, and that'll grow the film back as well as increase the render resolution. Uh, update render paths basically um, creates the appropriate path structure based on what we use in-house for the render outputs and also make sure all the folders exist in the location so Moto can write to them. Um, basically what it does is look at the, at the scene name and the location on disk and then figures out where the render images are supposed to go. This is configurable in a in a text file. Let's see where I have one of these. In a text file, which will define how the project is set up. Um, that's highly configurable, so it, It'll, it, it should work with a wide, wide variety of uh, pipelines and, and project setups. So you can specify where each uh, thing lives. So we have model folders, animation folders, and for images we have uh, CG outputs and comp folders and stuff like that. Um, but that's a little bit more involved and I can go into that in a separate video showing how to configure that. Headless Batch Creator creates a background uh, batch or command line rendering uh, ready files. Uh, can render passes if there are in the scene. Uh, it uses the scene range or an arbitrary range that you can input here, including a frame stepping. So if we put like three and a thousand to 1250, it'll render a thousand, a thousand three, a thousand six, and, and so on. If you put one in here, it just renders every frame. Uh, batch size, it'll, it'll split those uh, ranges up into batches of 20 frames. I've just found that Modo uh, 
kind of tends to eat up a lot of memory and uh, every like 20 frames or so is a good value of restarting Moto and freeing up the memory again. Um, it'll allow, it allows you to uh, set the output pattern. If you want a different one, then store it in the scene. You can use preview rendering now for the uh, batch creation. Or leave that off to use the normal bucket renderer. The options down here are the same options you have when uh, doing preview rendering. And you have the render type, which is manual by default, which uh, just creates a bunch of creates a batch folder next to wherever the scene file is sitting uh, with like all the files you need to render out uh, with the batch. And then you can on Windows just start the batch file or on Linux or Mac OS, you can just uh, start the batch script and that'll go through all the, the uh, frame batches. Or you can go uh, background process, so that will automatically start the render in the background. There's uh, at the moment no way to monitor that background process rendering. I've just included that a few days ago, but the plan is to have some kind of little monitoring app start when that starts, so you have a, an idea of what the background rendering is doing. And then uh, we have a simple open render outputs folder, so wherever path is in, in a render output, you can click that and it'll open the render path. So let's see. Uh, yeah, let's save that in my home folder and then select the render output, click that, and it'll open the output folder in your browser, Explorer or whatever. <clears throat> and the last is a kind of a scripting and catch all thing, uh, which allows you to version up a scene. Uh, it'll go by underscore v and then some kind of number. If it doesn't find that, as in this file name, it will ask you if you want to start versioning the scene file. If you go yes, it'll, it'll version up the file name. And then you can just go version up, version up. Or you can version up the scene with a comment, which will just, this is a new version and it'll just append that to the file name. ClearLog is just a simple uh, thing I've included for myself. It's helpful when scripting to have it one button, clears the event log thing. We also have again fix orphans and we have a link to the documentation that comes with the kit. And that's the kit so far. Um, most of it is pretty one click and go and tries to be smart about how it does things. Uh, there's a few more involved things like the tag animation or the transfer animation workflow and the blend hierarchy. But I'll go into those in uh, future videos. If you have any, any feature suggestions or uh, improvement uh, suggestions, I'm open to hearing them. Drop me a line. Yum, yum!